Hi everyone. Today in this video we are going to discuss about etanolol. What is this drug etanolol? The suffix olol indicates this drug is a selective beta 1 receptor antagonist. And this drug acts as a cardiac depressant. Therefore, this drug can be used in the cardiovascular disorders where there is an excessive stimulation of sympathetic system. So, etanolol is mainly used to treat hypertension. That's why this drug is considered as anti-hypertensive agent. Sometimes this drug can be combined with diuretics in order to increase the efficacy of the treatment. As diuretics are going to reduce the body volume, thereby they reduce blood pressure. Similarly, etanolol can also be used to control the angina. Angina is a pain in the heart which indicates a reduced coronary oxygen supply and increased demand. In such situations, etanolol can reduce the cardiac work, thereby it can reduce the cardiac oxygen demand and it improves the symptoms of angina. So these are the two important indications of etanolol and this drug can also be used in the early stage of myocardial infarction where there is a damage to the cardiac system. In such situation, etanolol can reduce the cardiac work as well as increase the cardiac efficiency. But this drug should not be prescribed for other cardiovascular disorders like heart failure because this drug is a cardiac depressant. It can further reduce the cardiac contraction, thereby reduce the cardiac output. So in the heart failure, etanolol is not prescribed. This drug is available at different strengths such as 25 mg, 50 mg, 100 mg tablets and mainly used as antihypertensive as well as to treat anginal attacks in the patients. So today in this video, we are going to discuss about this etanolol, how this drug acts, what are the important precautions, side effects, drug interactions of this etanolol we will discuss in this video. First of all, let us see the chemical nature of this drug. So this is the structure of etanolol. All the beta blockers are the aryl oxypropanolamines. So here the aryl ring is the simple phenyl ring which is attached with a functional group. This is nothing but estamide. So etanolol is having the estamide functional group. And on the nitrogen of propanolamine, one of the side chain is present. This is nothing but the isopropyl group. Now because of the bulky group on this, this drug is selective towards the beta receptors. Therefore, etanolol acts as selective beta 1 receptor antagonist. Now let us see how this drug acts. On the heart, the important adrenergic receptors are beta 1 receptors. These beta 1 receptors are G protein coupled receptors coupled with alpha beta gamma subunits and beta 1 receptors are working through alpha subunit and they are stimulatory in nature. So norepinephrine can act on these beta 1 receptors. When this norepinephrine binds to beta 1 receptors, these receptors are stimulated so that they can activate one of the enzyme adenyl cyclase AC. When this adenyl cyclase is activated, it can convert the ATP into one of the important secondary messenger cyclic KMP. This cyclic KMP produces so many functions within the cell through the activation of protein kinase A. Now protein kinase A is a phosphorylating enzyme which can activate the release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum as well as increase the intracellular calcium levels. And this calcium can result in the contraction by acting on the actin myosin filaments. Generally, the actin and myosin cannot produce a contraction because of block due to troponin. Now, this calcium can bind to this troponin complex, thereby it can produce the contraction within the actin myosin filaments. In this way, cyclic KMP produces contraction of the cardiac muscle through the activation of protein kinase A. Now, sympathetic mediators like epinephrine as well as norepinephrine can produce cardiac stimulation through this beta 1 receptors, which increase the rate of contraction, force of contraction, resulting in the increased blood pressure as well as increased cardiac oxygen consumption and cardiac work in the patients. So in the hypertensive patients as well as patients with angina, the sympathetic stimulation further increase the symptoms. In such situations, etanolol can be used, which is a selective beta-1 receptor antagonist. 
Etanolol can bind to these beta-1 receptors, thereby it inhibits the activity of beta-1 receptors, leading to cardiac depressant activity. So by block of these beta-1 adrenergic receptors, etanolol can reduce the cardiac work as well as cardiac oxygen consumption. And finally, it also reduces the blood pressure. Therefore, this drug is used as antihypertensive as well as anti-angenal agent. What are the precautions? Just we have seen that etanolol is a cardiac depressant. It can reduce the atrioventricular conduction, AV conduction. Generally, the AV conduction is controlled by parasympathetic system. When the sympathetic system is going to be inhibited, the parasympathetic activity is increased, which results in that decreased AV conduction. And when this AV conduction is reduced, it may result in the increased risk of heart block in the patients. So, the patients who are having the first degree heart block, the PR interval within the ECG is greater than 0.2 seconds. So in such patients, if this etanol is given, it can further increase the heart block leading to second and third degree heart block. Similarly, another important precaution of etanol is its use in the patients who are having the allergy. Allergens can release the histamine from the mast cells. So when this allergen binds to the mast cells, they can produce a degranulation and release of the histamine. This histamine can produce vasodilatation as well as other allergic reactions. In such situations, we can use the epinephrine in order to prevent this allergic response and anaphylaxis. Because epinephrine can act on the alpha-1 receptors, it can stimulate these alpha-1 receptors to produce a vasoconstriction. And this vasoconstriction can counteract the vasodilatation produced by allergic response. Similarly, epinephrine can act through the beta-2 receptors, which can control the release of histamine from the mast cells. In this way, epinephrine is useful in the treatment of anaphylaxis and controlling the allergic response. So in the patients already having any anaphylactic reactions, if etanol is going to be used, it can counteract the actions of epinephrine, thereby it can increase the allergic response in the patients. So again, precautions should be taken in the patients who are having the anaphylactic reactions. And in such patients, etanolol can further increase the allergic response because of counteracting the actions of epinephrine. Similarly, etanolol at low dose, it acts as selective beta-1 antagonist. At this low dose, it is having no significant activity on the beta-2 receptors, which are present on the bronchial smooth muscle. But when this drug is given at high dose, it loses its selectivity and it can also block the beta-2 receptors, resulting in increased bronchospasm. This drug should be carefully given in the patients who are having the risk of bronchospasm such as asthma as well as COPD. In such situations, etanolol can further increase the bronchospasm. Similarly, another important precaution of etanolol is that this drug can produce hypoglycemia in the patients. This is more important in the patients who are having the diabetes because in the diabetic patients, they may use few of the drugs like insulin or other hypoglycemic agents which may produce further hypoglycemia in the patients. This hypoglycemic effect of etanolol is again related to its beta receptor blocking activity. So at the liver as well as other tissues, beta 2 receptors are present, which are again G protein coupled receptors coupled with alpha, beta, gamma subunits. Again, these beta 2 receptors are activated through the norepinephrine. When this norepinephrine binds to these receptors, again adenyl cyclic system is activated which converts the ATP into cyclic KMP. This cyclic KMP can act through the protein kinase A, but at this location protein kinase A can stimulate as well as inhibit so many types of enzymes. For instance, this protein kinase A can inhibit the activity of glycosin synthase enzyme, thereby glycosin synthesis is going to be inhibited and it can stimulate phosphorylase enzyme which produce the breakdown of the glycose into the glucose. Similarly, this protein kinase A can also inhibit the activity of PFK2 phosphofructokinase 2, thereby it increases the hepatic glucose production. By all of these actions, norepinephrine results in the increased glucose levels. In this way, sympathetic system increases the glucose levels. But whenever this etanolol is going to be prescribed, it can block these beta-2 receptors. Thereby, it can reduce the hepatic glucose production as well as glycogenolysis, resulting in 
hypoglycemia. Similarly, care should be taken in the patients who are having the impaired renal function. In such patients, we can observe elevated levels of etanol because of the decreased excretion. So, whenever the creatine clearance is less than 35 ml per minute per 1.73 square meter of body surface area, the etanol dose should be reduced in order to prevent accumulation of the drug in the body. Now, let us see the drug interactions of etanol. Calcium channel blockers like verapamil as well as diltiazem, both of these drugs can act on the heart and they can reduce the atrioventricular conduction so that they can produce bradycardia as well as hypotension in the patients. Similarly, another calcium channel blocker is the nifedipine, which is a dihydropyridine selective for the vascular smooth muscle and again it can produce a hypotension in the patients. Similarly, cardiotonics like digitalis can also produce the bradycardia and class 1 antiarrhythmic agents like quinidine can also produce bradycardia. Etanol can also reduce the AV conduction, therefore it can also produce bradycardia. So, any of these drugs are given along with etanol, they can produce severe bradycardia as well as hypotension. Similarly, another important drug interaction observed with the clonidine. Clonidine is an alpha 2 agonist which inhibits the release of norepinephrine. So, clonidine is a centrally acting antihypertensive. It inhibits the sympathetic stimulation centrally. So, it is a centrally acting antihypertensive. When this drug is suddenly withdrawn in the patients, it can produce some rebound hypertension. So, if clonidine is replaced with the etanol, this etanol can further increase the rebound hypertension. So, some gap should be maintained between the stopping of clonidine and initiation of the etanol in the patients. Similarly, if you have the general anesthetics such as halothane, they can produce some cardiac depressant activity and they can produce some hypotension. This hypotension may result in the reflex tachycardia in the patients. So, here etanol can increase the hypotension produced by general anesthetics. So, care should be taken whenever this etanol is combined with few of the general anesthetics. What are the contraindications? Just we have seen that etanol acts as a cardiac depressant. So, this drug is contraindicated in other situations which produce cardiac depression. For instance, this drug is contraindicated in sinus bradycardia and severe hypotension even cardiogenic shock, metabolic acidosis, uncontrolled heart failure because this drug is going to reduce the cardiac output, second or third degree heart block since this drug reduces the AV conduction and in the severe peripheral arterial disorders since this drug blocks beta receptors. In all these situations, etanol is contraindicated. What are the side effects? The important side effects of etanol are mainly bradycardia, dizziness, vertigo, fatigue, diarrhea and nausea. This drug can also increase the risk of heart block as well as congestive heart failure. Some bronchospasm can be observed at high dose, insomnia, lack of sleep, tinnitus, some buzzing noise in the ears, some mood changes can be observed in the patients. How it is given? This drug is available as tablet as well as IV solution. The initial dose of the drug depends on the clinical conditions. Generally, the dose is initiated at 50 mg once daily and it can be increased up to 100 mg once daily. But in the patients who are having the renal impairment or any other such conditions, the dose is reduced to 25 mg once daily. So, that's about this etanol. Etanol is a selective beta 1 receptor antagonist which is useful as antihypertensive as well as in the treatment of angina. It can also be used in the conditions like acute myocardial infarction. But this drug is contraindicated in the congestive heart failure as this drug is going to reduce cardiac output and it is also contraindicated in the hypotension as well as severe bradycardia. This drug acts by selectively blocking the beta 1 receptors on the heart thereby reduce both rate as well as force of contraction of the heart which results in the reduction of blood pressure as well as cardiac oxygen consumption. Even it is selective for beta 1 receptors, but at high dose it can also act on the beta 2 receptors resulting in the bronchospasm. And this drug can also increase the hypoglycemia in the patients. So in the diabetic patients, it may produce sudden hypoglycemic attack. Along with the calcium channel blockers and cardiotonics like distalis, class 1 antiarrhythmic agents like quinidine, this drug may increase the 
bradycardia and hypotensive effects and with general anesthetics it can also increase the hypotensive response and reflex tachycardia when clonidine is replaced with the etanolol some gap should be maintained because stopping of use of clonidine may produce rebound hypertension which is further increased by use of etanolol this drug produces important side effects like bradycardia dizziness vertigo fatigue and some bronchospasm and it can also increase the risk of heart block as well as congestive to heart failure finally this drug is available as tablet as well as iv solution normally this drug is given at initial dose of 50 mg once daily and the dose can be increased up to 100 mg in case of angina the dose may be increased up to 200 mg once daily but in the patients who are having the renal impairment the dose should be reduced the initial dose is 25 mg once daily so that's about this etanolol hope you have enjoyed this video if you like this video please subscribe to our channel share this video with your friends post your comments in the comment box thank you for watching this video